to us. He's been so good to me. I don't know if y'all know or not, but I, I love that little old short woman right there. <laughs> but I don't love her more than I love God. And you know, there came a time in our marriage, and there continues to be times in our marriage where we have to make a decision that walking around in the wilderness is not enough. That looking over into the promised land is not enough. That I must enter in. That I must overcome the obstacles and the hurdles and those things that would hinder me. And I must enter in. Where okay is no longer good enough. Where better than such and such and so and so is not enough to carry the day anymore. But that I must be all that God is calling me to be. And that I want to have all that God would desire that I have. To no longer settle for just okay. Yeah. Let's look today at the gospel of Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. I ask when you found it, you would please stand in reverence to the word of God and that you would signify with an amen. Amen. Mark chapter 10, we'll begin at verse 21. Amen. And the word of the Lord says, Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, one thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross, and follow me. Hallelujah. And he was sad at that saying, and went away grieved, for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked around about, and said unto his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, Who therein? can be saved you may be seated let us pray almighty God we come before you now Lord to give thanks unto you Lord Lord we thank you for all that you are doing here in this place in this ministry Lord among these your people Lord Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercies upon us, Lord. How you have looked past all of our faults and our mistakes, Lord, and you have still loved us. And Father, we just give thanks unto you today, Lord. We give glory unto your name, Father, because even in the midst of the sin, Lord, you still found it worthy, Lord, to send your son that he would die for our sins, Lord, that we might have an opportunity, Lord, to receive you and to be in your presence, Lord. Almighty God, we pray and we ask right now that you would have your way, Lord, in this service, Lord, in this time, Lord, that you would use me according to your will, Lord, and that you would provide all that your people are in need of, Lord, that you would break yokes, Lord, and you would help us to enter in, Lord, to your presence, to your promises. Father, we ask these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I have a question for you today. Where's your treasures? Where is, where are your treasures? For those of you who don't know, my wife and I had an opportunity to travel to New York this past week. And I saw some things that were uh, very interesting to me, and they really just jumped out in my spirit. I saw a woman who had one leg. And she was on crutches. And she was coming up out of the subway. Now, in the subway, they have elevators in many of them. 
we were in in, uh, in Union Square, which is a big subway station, and it had an elevator in it. But this woman, even though she had one leg and she was on crutches, she went up some very steep flight of stairs. And I just was looking. We were right behind this lady, and I was looking at her, and I was thinking to myself that, that even as she walked up to these stairs and the obstacle that lay before her, there was something in her that would not allow her to be hindered from achieving what it was that she was to achieve. There was something that God had placed in her that even though she would have the opportunity to take the easy way out and hit that button on the elevator, she said, no. She said, I'm going up these stairs. And as steep as they were, and she had no way to hold on to the rail because she had crutches in each hand. But not only did she go up those stairs, but she made it up those stairs with a brisk pace. And then she got up to the top and she went right on about her business out on into the crowd. And she made a way where she had to make her way. Another point we saw a little person. And I don't know if he was able to walk or not. But he was on his mobile cart, his mobile chair. And he was down there and he had a microphone set up and he was singing. And he had such a beautiful voice. And he was singing yeah. there in the subway station. All right. And I was just amazed that despite the situation that these people had, it was something in them uh -huh. where they had made up their minds that they were going to use what God gave them regardless. They were going to get where they had to be. They were going to do what they had to do. They weren't going to be worried about the obstacles that were set before them, but they were simply going to use those things that God had gave them to get over the obstacles and to get where they needed to get. And as I was looking at them, I began to think about the Christian mentality that we have today where okay is simply good enough. Where, you know, if, if, if I go to church more than sister such and such goes to church, then that's enough. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, if, if I appear to be more holier than this person or that person, then I'm good. Then I'm good. There, there, there's no more requirement that we would be all that God would require us to be. That we would do all God calls us to do. It's just simply if we could just get close enough to the promised land to look over and see how nice it is in there then we're close enough and we're good enough there seems to be this mentality that goes on today in the children of God that we have no desire anymore to press forward no matter what the obstacles are no matter what the hindrance are no matter what those things that would seek to stop us and make up our mind and say we're going to be all that God called us to be You know, we, we, we got this spiritual hokey pokey thing going on. You know, we, we put our left foot in. We take our left foot out. We put our right foot in. And then when storms come, we let it shake all about. Then we, we mess around and we get caught up in stuff and we get turned all around. And that's what it's all about. That seems to be what it's all about today with this walk. I mean, you only have to watch the television. You only have to ask somebody, tell me about what your faith is. You got that cross around your neck. You say you serve Christ. Well, tell me about your faith. Tell me what that means to you. And it doesn't take but a second for it to divert off from what the word of God says. And it seems today that we struggle so much because it doesn't take much for the children of God to be just kind of pushed off and kind of pushed away from those things that God has called us to. Yes, yes. So we have to ask ourselves, where is our treasure? Is our treasure in the promised land? Is our treasure in the promises that God has given unto us? Right. Or is our treasure somewhere else? That thing that we keep getting diverted off to, that thing that keeps that bright shiny object, that thing that keeps grabbing our attention and pulling us away. That thing that says we must do this 
now even though I know I must be at Sunday school at 930 knowing that this thing that I'm doing is going to make me late I must do this thing now and it's okay for me to walk into church at 935 on, at 940 on, at 945 on, at 1245 <laughs> what is that thing that's our treasure what's that thing that hinders us so easily besets us there's an interesting discussion that takes place in revelations chapter 3 take a look at me with me I want y'all to see some things. The Lord showed me some stuff. I'm going to show it to you today. If he says the same. Revelation chapter 3. Far too many times we find ourselves with this Laodicea. Laodicea. Now, okay. Laodicea. Laodicea. The Laodiceans. Mentality. Look what Jesus tells them in Revelations three beginning at verse 14 unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things which says the Amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of God he says to them he says I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot I would thou were cold or hot so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot I will spew thee out of my mouth because thou say I am what rich and increase with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked he says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment that thou mayest be clothed and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear and anoint thy eyes with eye salve that thou mayest see. Hmm. Wow. You see, this is a problem that so many of us are running into. Jesus says something here very interesting. He says, he says, you're not hot he says you're not on fire for this gospel to serve me to do my will and he says but you're not cold either he says he says I would rather you be really 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 hot and serve me with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul or he says I would rather you just make up your mind I ain't fooling with you Lord and I'm gonna leave you alone completely and go on about there and bust hell wide open mm -hmm. all right. he says if you rank this thing is hot is cold then it's lukewarm he says it's something worse than being cold he says this he says look this is what he says he says the worst thing you can do is to know this truth to understand what i have given to you to understand what my sacrifice on the cross meant for you and you play with it That you understand the power that I have given to you. Understand this promise. You can wrap your mind around it. There's capacity in you to receive this. Uh -huh. But yet you want to walk in that gray space that you think oh, exists, free. but it don't exist. He says, he says, it's just like nasty food. He says, I can't even tolerate you. He says, he, says, it's, it's, he says, it's just like when you get a hold of something nasty at the restaurant. Yeah, no matter that five-star restaurant, it don't matter how nice it is, how linen the cloth is. He yeah, said, yeah. when it comes in my mouth, he says, it's got to come back out. Yeah. He says, I cannot even swallow this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's what he's saying. He yeah, says, uh -huh. I, it's got to come back out. I got to yeah. spit it out. It is such an abomination that you would come to church, that you would hear the word of God, that you would understand and hear the teaching that's being taken place. And then you would go and make up your mind that you're going to just kind of serve him, that you're just going to kind of worship him, that you're just going to do it when you feel like doing it, that you're going to make up your mind that despite the promises and the treasures that God has laid up for each and every one of us, that there's a treasure, that there's a richer there's some riches out there somewhere that are more important to you. Uh, all right, all right. Uh, That's what he's saying there. The word of God tells us here today in this scripture about this rich young ruler. Yeah, yeah. And it's really interesting in verse 17 what he says. He says, he says, and when he was gone forth into the way. So in other words, Jesus is minding his own business. Uh -huh. 
there came one running and kneeling to him. Now look at this. He says, now Jesus is minding his own business, but here comes this man to him trying to find out how to get eternal life. And he says something very interesting here. If you look at the positioning of this young man, it's all good. He comes in a haste. He comes running up to him. He positions himself correctly. He kneels down before him. He asks the right question. He says, Lord, help me understand how I can get eternal life. Yeah, yeah. So from those who are standing around, everything looks really, really good. Come on, preacher. Yeah. And so many times we, we satisfied with that yeah. as Christians, yeah. as long as it looks really, really good. On, as long as you can look at me and it looks like my house is in order and it looks like I'm real holy and it yeah. looks like I read my Bible and it looks like I study a little bit and it looks like I give a little bit of my time and it looks like I can, and it looks like I love Jesus and it looks like I can raise my hand and praise the Lord. But it looks right. But there's something that's wrong here. There's something that's wrong here. And I'm not going to go through all this because I've preached this before and, and many other preachers have preached this before and I know you know this story here. But what I need you to understand is that what Jesus does here is he exposes him uh -huh. for where his treasure is. Yeah. Where treasure. Come on. Right. See, this is what happens here. He, he boils all that nonsense away. He said, yeah, it's nice that you came down here. It's nice that you addressed me the right way. It's nice that you came running and all that. That's beautiful. But where's your heart at? Where's your treasure at? He says, what, what really are you coming for? What are you really trying to accomplish? What are really are your goals in life? My brothers and sisters, what, what, what is your goal in life? What are you really trying to accomplish? What are you really doing here? Did you come in the door today looking from a word from God that would prick your heart, that would change you, that would make you leave this place differently than you came in? What was your goal? What was your purpose when you were locking your seatbelt on and you were getting in your car and you were starting it up and you were making your way to 123 Goliath today? Were you going through the motions? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Was this what you do on Wednesday nights because it ain't no basketball on? Come on, or was this an opportunity for you to come hear the word of God to let your heart, your soul be changed that you would move closer to him and the promises that he has for you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where are your treasures at, brothers come on, and sisters? Come on, come on, I have to ask you this today. Because, see, this is what's going on here. Look what it says here in 21 when he breaks it down to him. He said, then Jesus beholding him loved him. Oh, yeah, he loved him. Somebody needs to know today that Jesus loved you. Yes, yep. yeah. You know, somebody's sitting here today and they're dealing with stuff. And they've made mistakes and they've messed up. And the reason that they can't get it right is because they think that Jesus doesn't love him. Do you not think Jesus knew this man was a mess before he came to him? Regardless of the positioning, do you think Jesus didn't know that he was a mess, number one? And number two, do you think that he didn't know the decision that he was going to make? Jesus knew his heart, but he loved him anyway. And somebody here needs to know that you need to stop letting the devil lie to you and say, you know, you're going to always be this way. And this is all you got. And it can't get no better than this. And this is close to the promised land you're going to get. And so you might as well put your treasure somewhere else other than Jesus Christ because you can't have him. I'm here to tell you that today is the day that you can make up your mind that you can have Jesus Christ for real. That you can put your treasures in heaven as he told this man right here. And that you can put all that other nonsense aside and no longer get swayed off course and end up going down the wrong road. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look what he says. He says, one thing thou lackest. Go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, take up the cross, and follow me. Look what he said. He says, he says, unburden yourself yes, with the things of this world. Mm -hmm. He says the things that you consider riches are about nothing. Well. He said that stuff that you find valuable is about nothing. Yeah. Now I need to make sure that we understand that when we talk about riches riches is a different, mean different things to different people. Yes, it does. Everybody don't look at the same thing as riches. 
right? Somebody, some people think that their attitude is their riches. You know, some people find great value in their ability to tell people what they want to tell them, to say it how they want to tell it. Some people say, think that their anger has great riches in it, and they take great pride and great joy in in being wrathful and telling people a piece of their mind and getting all up in people's faces and saying stuff to people that they know they ain't got no business saying because that is where their treasure is. You see? That's where their gold and silver is. But look what happens in 22. He said, and he was sad at that saying and went away grieved for he had what? Great possessions. How did he have great possessions if he walked away and he did not have eternal salvation? Oh, preacher. Good question. Yes, sir. Good question. Where's your treasure at? <laughs> this is what we have to understand that regardless of what it is, if it hinders us from having salvation, it ain't really that great a possession. On, if it hinders you from having salvation, yeah. it's something you need to get rid of. Yeah. You need to throw that away. Yeah. There's a need for some spiritual trash cans. There's a need for us to assess ourselves and throw some things away. Back over in Revelations 3, Jesus says something very interesting right there. He said the problem with these folks, he said the reason why they were lukewarm, the reason why they was all over the place, the reason why they couldn't get hot for Christ, the reason why they couldn't serve him is because they were saying to themselves in their own mind, I'm rich. They say I'm increased with goods and I have need of nothing. They said, hey, I'm all right just like this. I'm good like this. Where are your treasures at? See, this is why we get in so many problems sometimes because we think we are okay. We okay. I had a huge problem. I had a huge problem in my marriage because I thought I was okay. I thought I was okay. But that was situations when I was right. But I still wasn't okay. You understand? Because the word of God says that I'm supposed to love my wife as Christ loved the church. Yes, sir. So that means sometimes I need to shut my mouth up and I need to humble myself even when I'm right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You see what I'm saying? But, but see, I took, great, I took great enjoyment in the fact that I was right. It's, oh, it's quiet in here. I must be helping somebody. I took great enjoyment in the fact that I was right. I'm right. I told the truth. That's it. I'm the winner. Oh, I took great enjoyment in that. Yeah. <laughs> but but that but see that but that didn't get me where I wanted to go. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? That didn't get me into the promised land with my wife. On, you understand? Now. We were still going on around out there in the desert, mm. but I was right. Mm. Come on. You understand? Oh, I, I, I had I had my security blanket that said, I'm right. Wow. I'm as right as I was, we was out there in the room. Come on now. Preach, preacher. But see, but, but that's where we have to get. Because he's he helping us to understand here. He says, look, he, said, he says, I have need of nothing. We, we got to understand, look, we got to understand that there, there's a, di- a dichotomy that works here. When we think we are something, when we think we are strong, then we are weak. Yeah. When we think that we can accomplish it and we can do it in our own power, when we take our worldly treasures and we think we can get the job done with that, if I thought I could stand up here and preach on my own merits because I'm so smart and all that, that would be really foolish on me because that would make me weak. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell the truth. But see, but when we understand who we are, when I understand that I'm just a big knucklehead kid that was born in Houston, that grew up in Edna, Texas, that then came to San Antonio by the grace of God, that this is his work that he's doing, that the words that are coming out of my mouth are not my words, but they are his words because I humble myself and I give him the glory and I say, Lord, have your way because I'm weak and I'm small and I can't do this on my own, Lord, but you call me to do this, Lord, so if you would be with me, Lord, then you can do this in me then I'm strong the man of God said a little while ago he says when you humble yourself then God will exalt you see but see 
if you got your own treasures, if you got your own troubles, see, you, you can't humble yourself with your own treasures. There's no need for you to humble yourself. See, we'll fool ourselves and we'll think we're humbling ourselves even when we're not humbling ourselves. You see, I thought I was humbling myself when I was right. But I was still not humbling myself to my wife. There's a mistake that we make and we think that we're humbling ourselves when we're not humbling ourselves because we're still holding on to our treasure. There are things that are that there are things we're finding more enjoyment in and more pleasure in than serving and pleasing God. There's something that we are grabbing a hold of, whether it be something tangible or it be something intangible, whether it be our car or our house or our job or our status. Yeah. Or whether it be, you know, our money and the money in the bank account, how many commas we got. Whether it be, you know, how we feel, our anger, our, our, our issues that we have. Anything that we want to hold on to that has enjoyment, that brings us enjoyment. Come on, come on. If it brings us more enjoyment than saying, Lord, I'm right with you. My father is pleased with this. My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Then we have to ask ourselves, where are our treasures? Look what he says here. He says that you said you have need of nothing and you don't even know that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. He says, look, you, you, you in such a bad way, you ain't even got a clue. You don't have a clue. And I want you to know that when we put our treasures in foolishness, blindness comes with that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Blindness comes with that. See, blindness will allow you to hear this word that is going forward and look around and say, Ooh, I, boy, such and such is getting it. And boy, he talking to sister such and such over there. And boy, if they do two over there, don't get their act together because he's talking about their marriage. And whoo, if that one over there don't understand that he's preaching for them, preach, preacher. And it ain't, and it, whoo. It would have been nice if he would have said something about me and how holy I am and how righteous I am and how good my treasures are. Go Let the Holy Ghost Come on. Hey. Where are your treasures? You see, when you humble yourself, you'll find that every word that come out of this pulpit is something there for you to and for, for you. Even if even if you say, you know what, I, 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 have, I have searched myself, Lord. I feel like I, I'm good. I believe I'm good here. But, I'm going, but I'll take it as a warning. And I'll make sure that I don't fall into that trap. Even if that wasn't about me today, Lord. Because I know, because I'm small, Lord. Because I humble myself and I understand I can fall into that. If my brother fell into that, I could fall into that. And so, Lord, I'm going to get out on my knees and I'm going to pray, first of all, Lord, have mercy on my brother that's dealing with that. And then, Lord, have mercy on me, too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But see, you can't get to that point if your treasures are a bunch of foolishness. Jesus looked around and he said to his disciples, look, because the man is gone. He didn't left the presence. But there's, there's, in these next few verses, there's this amazement and astonishment that goes on from the disciples. They say, oh, what are you talking about? Rich people can't enter into the kingdom of God. How is this not possible? He said, if they can't get in, who, who supposed to get in? Because look, the world taught then and the world teaches us now that if you got some money in your pocket, you must have the favor of God. God done bless you. It ain't no way. Everybody else's house got two car garage. Yes, Yours got three car garage. You must be blessed. Uh -huh. Come on now. And highly favored. All right, all right. Come on now. And you can be the biggest devil out there. Yeah. But that was this belief. So, brothers and sisters, where are your treasures? Where are your treasures? See, we have to understand that, see, when we get in these situations where we put our, our treasures, we put our trust in things that are of no value, uh -huh. that there is a structural flaw. Mm -hmm. Have you guys ever heard of situations where you, there, there'll be a building that'll crash down, that'll fall? From time to time, you'll hear this. 
you know, there'll be a bunch of people in a building somewhere and it'll fall or, or floor or give way. Right. And they go back and what they do is they look at the architectural design and they say that they found out that it had a structural flaw in it. Okay? When we put our trust in riches that are not stored up in heaven, we have a structural flaw in us. And just like that building, the way you find out that there's a structural flaw is not by standing outside and looking at it and saying, oh, that's really a pretty building. That's wonderful. Oh, man, look how pretty that is. The way you find out that there's a structural flaw is when you begin to put it to the test. Come on. There you, go. you see, there was, a, there was a club or something somewhere a while back, a few years back, and there was a bunch of people in there, and it ended up falling. The floor oh. fell through, and a bunch yeah. of people died. Yeah. Right, right. Well, nobody knew. When it was two people in there, nobody knew that was a structural flaw. Yeah. But see, but when the weight came in, when the, when the storm came in, when that was a trying that took place at that point, then that, the, the flaw was revealed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look, take a look at, at, take a look at 2 Chronicles chapter 25. I got to show you something right quick. Second Chronicles Chapter 25. And we'll start at verse 1. Amen. Amaziah was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 20 and 9 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jehoradan of Jerusalem. Now notice what he says in verse 2. And he did that which right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. So in other words, when he came, it looked really good. The outside was there. He's going to make some decisions. He's going to do some things that are going to look really good and are going to line up. But see, there's a problem that takes place. The word of God says that his heart was not perfect. In other words, he was not fully committed to this gospel. He was not fully committed to serving Christ. There was still some things that he was holding on to. He had some pride. He had some arrogance. He had some, I like this. I prefer that. I get angry when I feel like it in him. Yeah, 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 yeah. All his treasures were not laid up in heaven. And I need you to know that there are some key things that happen here to this man. And go home and read this. I don't have time to give this off to you, but this is awesome. In verse 60, see, he was getting his army together. And he hired 100,000 men yeah. out of Israel. Uh -huh. And so when he makes this decision, the man of God comes and tells him, he says, don't take them folk to battle with you. Come on now. He uh -huh. said, they ain't no good. I'm not with them, and they'll be your downfall. Uh -huh. Now, he listens to the man of God, even though it hits him in the pocketbook. Come on now. Because he had already paid these soldiers money. But he listened to the man of God, right? That's, that's good. That's good. So he got rid of these. He didn't lighten the load. He didn't went from 400,000 men to 300,000 men, but he has gained God on his side. All right. See, this is a good move on his part. All right. So he's walking in the right way. It looks really good. But then the pressure comes. The pressure, the pressure comes because in verse 14 it says, And now it came to pass that after Amaziah was come from the slaughter of the Edomites, so basically after he had came from the battle, that he brought the gods of the children of Sire and set them up to be his gods wow. and bowed down himself before them and burned incense unto them. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. That's a structural flaw there. Yes, sir. Yes, See, yes, sir. for those of you who can hear my voice, if you find yourself in situations where, you know what, for a moment you're doing just right and you're pleasing the Lord and something come along, and all of a sudden you find yourself carried off to every wind of doctrine and all kinds of nonsense and foolishness. You must ask yourself, do I have a structural flaw? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where are my treasures at? Mm -hmm. Notice what gets notice what gets Amaziah here. It's this is it's his own pride. Yes, sir. It's his own pride. Yes. God has delivered him out of the battle. When when he's got to go to the battle, uh -huh. he's following God. Yeah. When God delivered him out the battle, now he got a big pride for heart and he do his own thing. He don't have no need for worshiping God no more. So he takes, the, he takes the idols of the people he just defeated with God 
and he want to worship him. That's blind. That's blind. But look what he says in 15. He says, wherefore the anger of the Lord was kindled against Amaziah and he sent unto him a prophet. Mm -hmm. There are many. There are many in here. When you go wrong and you do stuff you ain't got no business to do, God will send you a prophet. And that prophet will, will stand in this pulpit. He'll come to you personally. He'll pick the phone up and call you. And he'll tell you what thus said the Lord. He'll tell you that the Lord is angry with you. That his anger is kindled against you. And you'll do the same thing that Amaziah does here in verse 16. Notice what he says to him. He says, art thou made of the king's counsel? He says, forbear. Why shouldest thou be smitten? He says, in other words, are you part of my inner circle? Did I call you in here to be part of my council? He says, you might want to break off with what you have to say. You might want to hold your peace to yourself. He says, why would you get bust upside the head behind what you want to have come out your mouth? That's what he's telling him here. This is what he's telling him here. Because he has let himself get caught up in his own treasures. And look what the prophet says. He said, didn't the prophet forbear? In other words, he said, okay. And he said, I know that God has determined to destroy thee because thou hast done this and has not hearkened unto my counsel. Brothers and sisters, it's time to hearken unto the counsel of the word of God that you hear coming forth in this place. You have heard the promises of God. You know he wants to bless us. But it's time for us to make a decision about where we're going to store our treasures, about what we're going to allow to bring us enjoyment and pleasure, about what's going to be our priority, about what's going to be most important to us. Today is the day, brothers and sisters, to make up our minds about where we're going to put our treasures. Are we going to continue to trust in our ability to go make a few dollars at a job? Are we going to continue to trust in our ability to yell at folks or to get angry with folks or to get an attitude with folks and say, I'll teach them and I'll show them? Preach, preach. Or are we going to trust in the Most High God who had a plan designed before our mom and daddy was ever thought about, who said that I'm going to create them for my perfect will. And if they would trust me and just walk in by will, then they would find enjoyment and pleasure and fulfillment because that's what they were created for in the first place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Which one are we going to put our treasure in? Ain't but the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Today is today, brothers and sisters, that we must stop playing with ourselves and we must definitely stop playing with God. It is time for us to put our treasures in the most high God and say, Lord, whatever I have to go through, whatever I must deal with, Lord, no matter how long the journey is, Lord, no matter how wide the river is, no matter how high the mountain is, Lord, I have to push. I must press, Lord. I must go. I must be about. I must do, Lord, because I understand, Lord, that my treasures are laid up in heaven and this hope I have. This expectation, this confidence that I have in you, in your word, in your promises, Lord, is more to me than anything. And when we make up our mind that that's what we're going to do, that we're going to lay our treasures up in heaven and we're going to trust God in everything, he'll move in each and every one of your lives in here. He'll give you a fulfillment and a joy in what it is you do that you never thought was possible. That stuff that you think is important, that places you think you were trying to get, that stuff you thought you was trying to accomplish. You were not created for what you thought you were to accomplish. God actually handcrafted and designed and made you to do his purpose. There is no greater joy. There is no greater fulfillment than doing that which God has given and ordained for you to do. But you won't understand that if your treasures are all messed up. I love you so much. I missed you so much. May God bless you and keep you. This is my prayer.